as the stars of white sp space nest too and I made a table and that's that's brown too and I think to myself let's play celestial command hello everybody I am quest knight and uh, I am playing celestial command again this time I have a request from a lovely member of the uh, community let me see here. I've got to recall their name. Um, who was it that asked me this? It was... The Darklands! The Darklands! Yes, that's it. The Darklands! So the Darklands asked me if they could, if I could do a quick video on how to make, uh, on how to navigate. So, that is what I will do. Right, so, we begin here with our small mining ship. Now, I'll be doing my best to put um, the keys that I'm pushing up on the screen as I push them. So, um, hopefully that should help, but yes. Um, since I'm not entirely sure what to start with, I'm going to simply start from the very basic beginning, from, from absolutely nothing. So, right click will move your, uh, your camera around. That is, it's fairly simple. Scroll wheel zooms in and out. Yeah, you know how you know how you know how it'd be. Clicking selects whatever module you want to do, and then the module options appear over here on the left. Or I think you, oh yeah, you can drag that around. Okay. Um, so let's see. I don't think that there are any um, quick keys for the time dilation, but I may be I may be wrong. In fact, let me make sure that I'm not wrong. I am, in fact, not incorrect about that. There are no ways to, to bring this about without uh, sort of clicking it yourself. So, um, we begin with the simple stuff. W thrust forward. S thrust backward. A rotates you to the left. D rotates you to the right. E makes you move... Uh, Alright, so, so, so Q fires your... I think that's port thruster? Yes, yeah, ports port thrusters. Ports your left side on your ship. So so Q fires that. E fires the other side, the starboard side. R will halt all of your rotation. That's very good for when you're trying to dock with something. However, um now now is where I believe that they were asking me to actually actually get to with the navigation part, which is how do you tell what your ring is going to do? Now, Kerbal Space Program has um, uh, a series of node systems that you can use that will allow you it to adjust things before you even reach the point that you want so that you can find out where you need to go. Now, Celestial Command does not have this, so you sort of have to eyeball it. Now, one... <coughs> sorry. One of the things that you have to keep in mind about orbital mechanics is Newton's Three Laws which are, um, well, there's the first one, the second one, which is an object at motion, an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by an outside force, so, as you can see, unless we hit something, we're just gonna stay right here forever, that ship's about to, that ship's, oh god, that, that poor guy, oh no, oh you poor dear, I'm sorry, it was good knowing you. Oh wow, you're getting really close there. Oh, there we go. Ho oh, ho! Jesus! Back to what I was saying. So until unless I were to hit something like this trade ship, which I may actually hit it. So um, this is a perfect example of what to do. So I need to thrust backwards. So now I am going to hit it over here, but I need to thrust sideways or prograde as it is as it were though prograde technically means um if you fire prograde you see how my arrow is pointing along the line of my trajectory so i'm going around this way that is prograde when you fire your thrusters in the direction that you are already going that is so that you accelerate faster which lifts your orbit up on the other side of whatever body you were orbiting so say I was over here, if I fire prograde, it would lift my orbit up way over there. So I'm going to pull that back by firing retrograde, retro meaning backwards basically. So now 
if I wanted to, I can pull my orbit in by firing... Uh, I think this is called normal. Normal is where you... No, wait, is normal... Okay, so normal is, uh, I believe, up and down in relation to the orbital plane. So, like, this is the orbital plane where everything orbits around the sun, and if I were to thrust up and down, that's normal. Now, I can't do that because this is simple, simplified mechanics, so you don't have to worry about up and down, just left, right, and... You just have to worry about two-dimensional space. Um, however, we can fire... Oh, uh, what's it called? I cannot remember. I can't remember the, the proper term for it, but there's... there's um, the term for firing directly toward your... Like, say, if I pointed my engines... Toward the space station that I'm at. Or, not the space station, toward the planet that I'm orbiting. If I fired in that direction, that will cause my orbit to do this. It twists it and makes it go off that direction. The same can be said if I fired in the opposite direction. If I just sort of head out that way. So, that also is a good way to, to circularize yourself sometimes. However, usually circular... You have to do sort of a mix of the two. Firing prograde and retrograde and all that sort of stuff. And a circle or circular orbit is always the most efficient orbit. You're not losing any speed, you're not losing any time, you're just going to stay there until the end of days, unless something horrible goes wrong. Now, how do you, how do you um, speed up in an orbit? How do you catch up with something? Well, that is simple. You fire retrograde, which pulls your orbit down. Now, what that does... This is, um, this is something, what is it, I, I'm, I can't, I'm not sure exactly the scientific term for it, but there is a, a property whereby, um, in order to keep the same energy, you have to spin much, you have to orbit something much faster the closer you are from it, the closer you are to it, rather, sorry. So, the closer you get to the planet, the faster you will orbit it. Because, you know, you have to maintain a certain amount of speed, otherwise you just fall back to the planet. Because really what happens in space is you're not really floating so much as falling at a rate slower to the speed at which you're going around something. So, so think of it like, um, it's like, uh, it's like when you jump really far forward, you, uh, you come back down, but if you were to jump really fast, you just never would come back down. You'd keep falling past the Earth, essentially. So, that's, a, that's, that's, that's the sort of mechanic that we're working with here. Once we get to our periapse, that's what the P stands for, the A stands for apoapse. The periapse is the lowest part in your orbit, the apoapse is the highest part of your orbit, and you can see those down here. The eccentricity is um, how much of a of an oval your orbit is. Um, I don't quite know tangential velocity. I don't quite know angular velocity. I ain't got a clue. Who knows? Um, I know. I th apparently, angular velocity, as I just read, is how fast my ship is rotating. Yeah, that's how fast my ship is rotating. Okay. So that's in, that's turning clock like negative is counterclockwise positive is clockwise. Uh, let's see here. Right, so now that we are dropping down into a lower orbit, we will speed up time, and I will show what happens when you get to this point. Once you approach your apoapse, you will... Oh, hold on. Okay. Alright, so once you approach your apoapse, you fire retrograde again, and that circularizes your orbit. You want to have eccentricity is is when you have it very small. That's when um, you have a circular orbit. So let's let's see how circular I can get this actually. Oh, oh, oh. ooh, ooh, ooh. That's ooh. That that's a very circular orbit. So now that I am down here. Um, 
I can speed up time and you can see that I'm orbiting much faster than the trade ship that I have targeted. So this is essentially how you can how you can orbit things faster than say the recharging station out there. He's he has flown off into interstellar space. At that point, he is no longer orbiting this, the planet. He is orbiting the sun, which means that Eventually, because he's out beyond further than the sun than we are, we will pass him very swiftly, relatively speaking. <sighs> so, what to say, what to cover next? Um, hmm, let's see here. Uh, ha Alright, yeah. Now, I don't know the mechanics of it properly. Scott Manley explained it at some point, but, um... From what I understand, the the ratio of how how fast you catch up with something in an orbit that's above you is you you catch up to it like every orbit brings you seven times your dis your difference closer to it. I, I don't know the math, but um, Scott Lim Scott Manley would be able to tell you a lot better than that. I'll see if I can put a link to his channel in the description or something. I mean, if you don't know who Scott Manley is, but so what I can do here. Oh, I just noticed that, um, because it's a very circular orbit, I don't have an Apo apps or Perry apps, because they're, they don't exist. So let's see here, what now? Um, right, so let's say I want to catch up with this asteroid. Let's fire our thrusters like this. Now, when my orbit turns red, that means I am in a decaying orbit. Decaying orbits, as they sound, will kill you. Um, whereas a yellow orbit in this game means you are on escape trajectory. Escape trajectory is basically when you have achieved so much speed that the bounds of the planet are no longer any of your concern, and you begin to rocket off into the midst of space to die cold and alone in the middle of nowhere with no one to be able to, to hear your final screams and thoughts. So, this huge asteroid is what I'm approaching, and I actually managed to, to nail this pretty decently. So, I'm going to select my claw, my grabber or whatever, I'm going to toggle auto grab, click this, and I'm going to accelerate, or hit um, Q or E, rel you know, just various, various combinations of these things until I start to see that I am relatively still compared to it. At that point, I will turn off rotation control and try to aim myself relatively close to it and then give myself a little bit of a thrust because one of the most dangerous things you can do in space is be going too fast. Or always remember that. You can always speed up. It's very difficult to slow down in time. So now that I have grabbed onto this asteroid, I can activate my laser, which is automatically toggled to the uh, one key on your keyboard. So I have begun to mine, and if I zoom in close, I can show storage, and I've begun gathering aluminum, or aluminium, however you prefer, depending on what side of the puddle you live on. So with that done, I can then select my grabber, release it, uh, space bar is automatically toggled for your grabber. So once that has been released, you simply thrust away, give yourself a little bit of a thrust, and uh, and, uh <laughs> and as you can see, the trajectory, you can see it, it counts as escaping. That's why it's yellow. So see, I'm, I'm flying off into the midst of space at the moment. The further away you get from an object, by the way, the less you have to, uh, the less change in your delta V or the... Or not delta v, I guess. Well, yeah. The less change in acceleration or momentum you have to do in order to have a very large effect on your orbit mechanics. So you see how I'm very far away. So me just turning causes me to do that. Whereas if I just accelerate for a brief second, I'm already pulling myself back in. So I think I can... Alright, I think... Yeah, okay, so... That's pulling myself, my orbit in. I will accelerate a little bit to pull myself out of a descending orbit. 
descending and decaying are basically the same thing. Um, I mean, technically they're not, but for the purposes of this, they are. Ugh. Technically, a decaying orbit is something that the more and more you go through it, the more and more you start to slow down until you are in a descending orbit. So, okay, maybe it's not a de decaying orbit, but it's a bad thing regardless. So now, I'm going to try and catch up with this trade ship. So now, I need to make sure that I don't stay in this orbit, otherwise I will eventually explode. So now that we are catching up to it, we can uh, begin to accelerate after it. Let's try and catch up with it a little faster. In a strange way, orbital mechanics requires you to slow down in order to speed up. It's a very strange system. However, sometimes you do have to actually just fire towards something in order to get to it. Now, we are going to make contact with this space vessel soon. Ugh. At which point, we need to request docking permission. And one of their docking ports will turn blue, like that one. And now we need to turn our docking port on. And start rotating. Rotate complete. And now we need to start firing our thrusters to align ourselves properly. Go ahead and back up a little bit. Fire our port thruster. And now, we are docked. See? Behold, the wonders of docking. So then you can do your business here, and when you're done, you simply toggle docking, and you thrust forward, and away you go. So, I hope that that has answered as many questions as possible. Um, if anyone has any other questions about mechanics or just simple things like that I'd be very I'd be more than happy to to assist uh, in anything like that so I hope you guys have enjoyed yourself please check out anything else on my channel have have fun and I hope you enjoy your day so until the next time that we meet continue on your quest and fare thee well